Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. In this DCS F16C Viper video, we'll discuss JDMs for the Viper. Our F16 will be able to deploy the 2000 class GBU31 version 1B, the Penetrator 3B version, and the 500 pound class GBU38. All JDM types can be mounted on stations 3 and 7. Some of the biggest advantages of JDAMs compared to laser guided bombs is that they are fire forget and they can be employed when the target is masked by weather. Let's get started. Alrighty, so welcome to Western Cyprus at Papos Airfield. This is a combination of civil and military. And on our jet today, we have four GB38s uh, loaded on two Baru 57 smart racks. And given this loadout, we'll need to make sure we're in a Cat 3 configuration. Nose wheel steering on, and let's taxi out to the active. And once we get airborne, uh, we'll go to the uh, JDAMS MIS page and we'll set up the the weapon there. Actually, I think it's the first time I've done a video with the uh, Greek skin, which is actually one of my favorite uh, skins out there for the Viper. Okay, no one on final. You can see some of the uh, hardened aircraft bunkers back there. Okay, pointy and down the runway. Let's get going. You're coming up. Okay, 350 out of gate. Take a look at some of the sights. That looks like fun. It's a nice beach resorts. Archaeological site up there, shopping mall. That looks like a fun place to hang out. Anyway, enough jibber jabber. Let's uh, get ourselves pointed uh, north, or at least roughly so. Okay, set ourselves to about five degrees pitch, and we'll set attitude to control. And at this point, uh, let's zoom in to the cockpit, in particular uh, the right DDI. Let's go air ground master mode. And here we have the uh, JDAM SMIS page. Uh, as you might imagine, we're in air ground mode, and we have two delivery modes for JDAMs, both the 38 and the 31. We have pre planned pre, as well as visual or VIS. Then we go to our inventory page. We see that we have uh, two fuel tanks, four total uh, GB38s on Brew 57s. Uh, two AM9Xs and two AM120s. Coming back out, again, we see we have four GB38s here. Now let's go ahead and power these bad boys on. And we have uh, the ability to create four different profiles. All right, now our profile one, then we can go to two, three, four, back to one. And each profile has the characteristics uh, here in the center. And to modify those, we will go to the control page. So again, we have the ability to cycle through our profiles. We'll modify profile one. And the first one we have here is our arming delay. And this could range anywhere from four to 25 seconds. And this determines the time it takes the weapon to arm once it comes off the jet. So repeated presence of the OSB will cycle through. Let's go to seven seconds. There we go. 
Then coming down, we have our function option. Uh, right now, we're in air. And this would uh, allow you to do an air burst if you had a DSU-33 uh, fuse on board, which we don't right now, uh, hopefully someday in the future. Uh, let's go next to our ground. And if we have ground and we have a joint pro programmable fuse or a JPS fuse, then we have our function delay. And this can go anywhere from, as you can see, uh, zero seconds up to uh, 24. If we go one more, we have our ground delay. And then rather than milliseconds, it goes to actually hours, anywhere from 0.25 hours up to 24 hours, almost like a, almost like a mine at that point. Let's go back to air and we'll keep it there. I uh, hear this actually started at 10 and this is our alignment. So at 10, it's going to be an unsatisfactory and I'll go all the way down to one for a good alignment and then past one, it'll actually go to already an RDY. Uh, over to the right, we have our impact angle, which I just imagine goes from uh, zero to 90 degrees. So right now it's 60 degrees. We're going to go say a uh, nice 45 degree. We'll go four, five and enter. And we have a 40, 45 degree impact angle. Then we have impact azimuth, and that can go between zero and 360 degrees. And then our impact velocity is the determination of our minimum velocity in feet per second. We want that impact to hit the ground. Coming back out, I uh, here in the bottom, it indicates the selected weapon station we have uh, ready to go. So we can put JDAMS on three and seven. Right now we have three active. Coming over, let's bring up our TGP. We're going to be using that a little bit later. And now we got a bit of a fly out uh, across the strait to the target area. And let's take this opportunity to talk a little bit about the F-16 in general. So as most of you are probably well aware, we've had two t teams working on the Viper and the Hornet for a while now. A much larger team working on the Hornet, mainly so we can get this product uh, once and for all out of early access, feature complete. And the big items remain on that, of course, are the uh, ACLS and the uh, approach mode for ATC. Uh, certainly there's some bugs and tweaks we'll be doing also, but those are the big ones. And in parallel, we had uh, three folks working on the Viper. But now that the Hornet is nearing its feature completion state, we've now moved a lot of the uh, program resources from the Hornet onto the Viper, essentially flip-flop the manpowers on those two different teams to speed up Viper development. And the next weapon for the Viper after JDAM will be the JSAL and some a few other features too. But the big push is going to be on fixing bugs and tuning features and just generally improving the state of the current build of the Viper before we start adding a lot of new features. It's a very important we have a very good foundation moving forward. And I sincerely hope that's going to be welcome news to a lot of those F-16 pilots out there. Anyhow, uh, let's go ahead and skip ahead to the target area. Okay, so welcome back. Uh, I can see here I am on altitude hold and also steering select to my steer point, which is up here ahead of us. It's also the target location. On the right MPD, I really don't need the SMIS page anymore because everything is set up. So I'm going to transfer this to the HSD. And we can see the essential point of interest is speed ahead of me, which is going to mark a couple of villainous C-130s on the ramp. Now, we don't need it, but uh, I'm going to have the targeting pod take a look so we can do some real-time uh, battle damage assessment, or BDA. But of course, with the JDAM, one of the great advantages is we need to. We could drop right through a cloud and um, don't need any uh, targeting pod to be looking at that target, of course. So let's go uh, narrow. I'm going to go uh, black hot. Let's go to a manual gain control. Zoom in. Let's go with this guy here. That's good. And what you usually do is I uh, put the targeting uh, point, the speed, right at the base of the target. Team is forward, long, up, point track, and speed. That's all set. So up here on the HUD, we have our launch zone. Top is 20 miles. Top of the staple is our maximum launch range. Bottom of the staple is our minimum. At the bottom of the data block is our current range target, 17 miles, and the heading to the target. Naturally, just like a Hornet, I'm going to fly to keep the flight path marker on the asthma steering line, the ASL. Actually, let me disable steering select. Don't need that anymore. 
And you'll see here at the um, along the ASL, we have a little horizontal bar. That's going to be our release queue. And as we get closer, it's going to start marching down the ASL. And once it intersects the flight path marker, uh, the FPM, I'll go ahead and hold uh, down the weapon release button, and the JDM will come off the jet. Also, we're going to see we're in pre plan mode. Pre. Here comes the release queue. Okay, button down and release. At this point, I'm going to chop back on the speed. And my biggest uh, concern right now is keeping a good line of sight on that target. So I'm going to keep the altitude hold on, just make my life a little bit easier. And I'm going to come off to the left, then go straight, and then establish a nice orbit around the target. Uh, looking down to the right for the targeting pod to have a nice good look at it. Keep my speed around 350 or so. Straighten out, and we should see the airfield below us now. There it is. Start orbiting above it, and it looks like we're going to have a cloud in the way of the TGP here. Yep. In the bottom corner, we can see our timed impact, 13 seconds. So as you can see, using the uh, pre-plan is uh, fairly simple and actually a lot like the Hornet for those that are familiar with that. So of course the Viper does not trim and roll. So once you have that weapon release, it's, you're gonna have to probably re-trim just a little bit and roll. There we go. So the next mode we can take a look at is visible mode. So we'll go back to the SMIS, we'll go visual, and we can see a little diamond up here on the top that indicates that the HUD is now our sensor of interest or soy and we can use the TDC to move this around and we can use this to designate our next uh, speed so let's get rid of altitude hold So we can move it around. Team is forward. And we made a new destination point for that. Pretty straightforward. So folks, that's a little look at using the JDAM for the F-16 coming up and a very near update. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Thanks.